The story of Russia is characterized by some as a quest for a warm water port. But that does not mean that Russia doesn't have access to the sea. In fact, Russia has access to 14 seas, of which just three of them are ice-free all year. And one of those isn't actually a sea at all. To cover all the seas, this video has been split into two parts and I have teamed up with Andrew from All About Russia Hello. to give an overview of the seas Russia has access to, their roles in the Russian Federation, and the story behind Russia's connection to them, starting with the smallest. The Sea of Azov is the smallest or the 14th largest sea Russia has access to. It is 15,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Bhutan. Internationally, it borders with Ukraine and domestically borders with the Rostov Oblast, the Krasnodar Oblast and the Republic of Crimea. This sea boasts to be the shallowest in the world at an average of 7 meters deep. Despite being frozen from December to March, the sea has historically served as a trading route used by ancient Greeks, Romans and Scythians. Russian access to the sea began in the 8th century with Kievan Rus, but would lose access to it in the 13th century due to Mongol invasions. It wouldn't be until 1696 that the Russians again had permanent access to the Sea of Azov, seizing from Ottoman Crimean forces, seeing notable action in the Crimean, First and Second World Wars. This has continued into the modern day, as recently as 2018, when another Ukrainian-Russian competition flared up in the area. Access to the Sea of Azov is important to Russia for trading reasons, serving as an outlet into the wider Black Sea and the Mediterranean. The White Sea is the 13th largest sea that Russia has access to, coming in at over 34,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Jordan. As a northern sea, it has no international borders. However, domestically, it shares them with the Murmansk Oblast, the Karelian Republic, and the Arhangelsk Oblast. The White Sea has historically been used for fishing, hunting, and trading by the native Karelians, Russians, Sami and Norwegians. It takes its name from the ice which forms in the northern parts of the sea and is usually frozen from October through to June. However, along the coast, it does remain ice-free year-round. The indigenous Karelians and Pomors had used this sea for centuries hunting and fishing, and the Russians had known of it since at least the 13th century, if not before. Norwegian Vikings had used the sea to both raid and trade with the Novgorodian Republic, who used the sea as their main trading artery, centred on the first ocean-faring port of Russia, Holmogory. This would be followed by Muscovy in the 15th century, when they conquered the Novgorodian Republic. The breadth of the trade was not just limited to Norwegian goods, however, and this access tied the Novgorodians followed by Muscovy to the Hanseatic lead, including the markets of the Netherlands, Germany and of course England. The sea's proximity to the growing Swedish Empire, as well as its limited potential due to have been frozen for much of the year, made it a precarious vein of Russia's trade network, one severed several times by invaders throughout the centuries. Gradually, the sea lost its importance after the Treaty of Nystad, ceding access to the Baltic Sea to Russia, diminishing the White Sea's role for trade. However, the sea would resurge in importance in the 20th century, seen by many as a soft underbelly into Russia proper, one exploited during both of the world wars as well as in the Russian Civil War. As such, Soviet times saw regular patrols by both the Northern Fleet and their nuclear submarines. This continues into today, with the Northern Fleet still patrolling the cold waters. In the present day, the sea is also used for limited fishing and tourism of some of its islands, most famously the Solovetsky Islands. The Petrora Sea is the 12th largest sea that Russia has access to. It is over 31,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Belgium. As a northern sea, it has no international borders, but domestically shares them with the Nenets Autonomous Okrug and the Arkhangelsk Oblast. Its name comes from the Petrora River which itself stems from the Nenets for Forest Dweller. The sea is frozen between September and July annually and historically was used for fishing and hunting by the indigenous Nenets and Komi people. Russians had known of this sea since at least the early 12th century with some of the tribes there paying tribute to the Kievan Rus and later to the Novogordian Republic. However, the first attempt to learn more about the sea was undertaken in 1032 when Ulab of Nizhny Novgorod journeyed there. As Russian control grew in the north, greater understanding of this sea and its access to the larger Siberian seas was established. Aside from the furs and fish found there, the Petchora was one of the most strategically useful, allowing easier movement into Siberia as opposed to crossing the Ural Mountains. This was so much so that in 1619 access to the sea was forbidden to foreigners. Over the centuries, regular transportation of people and goods into Siberia led to the Petchora Sea being one of the best explored of all Russia's Arctic seas. 
Due to its remote location though, it too became the home of several gulags, seeing thousands work to death on its icy shores. In the late 1980s, large reserves of oil were discovered, leading to the construction of the world's first Arctic oil rig. The industrialization of such a sea did not go unchallenged, however, and as recently as 2013, Russian Greenpeace activists were in conflict with the state over the matter. The Caspian Sea is technically not a sea at all. It is in fact a lake, and the world's largest at that. But for the sake of sensibility, we have included it in our video here today. This sea is 140,000 square miles in size, making it the 11th largest sea that Russia has access to, and larger than the nation of Greece. Internationally, it borders Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Iran and Azerbaijan. Domestically, it borders the Republic of Dagestan, the Republic of Kalmykia and the Astrakhan Oblast. The name Caspian comes from the Caspi people who live at the southern end of the Caspian Sea. Though some nations, such as Turkmenistan and Azerbaijan, know it by another name, the Khazar Sea. Historically, Persia has had great influence in the region, using the sea for fishing and limited trade. The reason it was limited trade is that there were, historically speaking, not many ports to trade with along the Caspian Sea. The first Russian contact with the Caspian Sea was in the 10th century, when the Kievan Rus overran the Khazars who lived in the northern part of the Caspian. Russian access was not permanent however, and due to an array of nomadic peoples occupying the area, it would not be until 1556 that the Russians returned. In Russian history, the Caspian Sea has been used as a springboard for invasions into Central Asia. But during Soviet times, it did too prove to be an artery during the war years, receiving supplies across it from Iran. Today, Russians use the Caspian Sea for fishing, trading and for oil exploitation, with several large rigs on this massive lake. Access to the Caspian Sea is very useful for Russia, as it does not freeze over at any point during the year. As such, the Caspian Flotilla is based at Astrakhan to deter any potential threats from across the water. The Baltic Sea is the 10th largest sea that Russia has access to. It is 146,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Japan. Internationally, it borders with Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Sweden, Poland, Germany and Denmark, whilst domestically it is bordered by just St. Petersburg and the Leningrad Oblast, and the exclave of Kaliningrad. As such, the sea is known by a variety of names, often as the Eastern Sea for countries like Germany and Denmark, or the Western Sea for Estonia and Finland. In Russian, the name of the sea is Baltica, derived from what the Lithuanians and Latvians call the sea. It is often frozen from November to January and is known for its rough waves. Yet historically the sea has been one of Russia's best trading routes, providing access to the wider Scandinavian and North European world. Traditionally, access to the sea was blocked by Finnic peoples and later Sweden, and thus it was only in 1721 that the Russians gained access to the sea, defeating Sweden in the Great Northern War. This was a landmark moment in Russian history and improved their trade opportunities with the West immensely. This is so much so that Russia actually moved and built itself a new capital with greater access to the sea, quickly becoming the largest and wealthiest port in the empire. The Baltic Sea has served as both a lifeline and a cause for concern for Russia, facing both blockades and attacks during the Crimean, First and Second World Wars. Today the Baltic Sea is home to the Western Fleet of the Russian Navy and is also the primary entry for foreign visitors travelling by boat. This sea is the city of St. Petersburg receiving hundreds of cruise ships every year. The Black Sea is the ninth largest sea that Russia has access to, coming in at over 165 5,000 square miles in size, making it larger than the nation of Paraguay. Internationally, it borders Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Georgia. Domestically, it is bordered by the Krasnodar Krai and the Republic of Crimea. The name Black Sea comes from the dark waters of the region, though in ancient times it was known as the Euxine Sea or the hospitable sea to the Greeks. The sea was traditionally an avenue for trade, and this is one that Russia still pursues today. This is because the sea hardly, if ever, freezes over, making it capable of being used as a trade conduit year round. It also serves as Russia's entrance into Southern Europe and the wider Mediterranean world as well. There is an ancient history of usage around this sea, with the Greeks, Romans and Scythians all using it. Russian access to this sea came around the 8th century, when Kievan Rus 
traded and raided across it. Like the Sea of Azov mentioned in the previous video, Mongol invasions cut off access to this sea in the 13th century, and it wasn't until 1783 that Russia regained permanent access, defeating and absorbing the Crimean Khanate in that same year. Russian access to this sea has always been a great source of controversy and conflict. The Crimean War, both the First and Second World Wars, as well as the recent annexation of Crimea, all saw conflict around the Black Sea, contesting Russia's access to it. This is arguably the most important sea to Russia, enabling it to access the wider world and thus influence it. As such, the Black Sea Fleet is located here, regularly patrolling to deter any foreign designs on those waters, whilst commercially every year hundreds of thousands of Russian tourists flock to the sunny beaches of Crimea and Krasnodar. The Chukchi Sea is the 8th largest sea that Russia has access to. At 24,000 square miles, the sea is larger than the nation of South Sudan. Internationally, it borders the US state of Alaska, whilst domestically it is exclusively bordered by the Chukchi Autonomous Okrug. It is named after the primary residence. There is a long history of the sea being used for hunting and fishing by several Arctic peoples, such as the Yugahir, Aleut, and of course the Chukchi. Going back to at least 1800 BC, Russia gained access to the sea only in 1648 when explorer Semyon Dezhnev arrived on its shores seeking furs. Further exploration missions such as Vitus Bering in 1728 mapped the seas further for Russia, but due to the sheer distance from Moscow, the Chukchi Sea was one of the most overlooked water access points for Russia. This mentality changed with the start of the Cold War in 1945 and the sea became home to regular Red Army Navy units patrolling, looking for American submarines or warships. Today access to the sea is still restricted with a significant military presence. The sea is frozen over from November to March and limited deposits of gas and oil have been discovered in the region. Still hunting and fishing make up the largest part of the economy and even that is small in numbers. Now head on over to Andrew's channel to check out the seven largest seas of Russia or indeed any video on his channel because he provides the motherload of information. Now guess where this is? Subscribe, ring the bell button, Geo Perspective out.